just come to Eggleston Abbey. So before I get to my uh, farm for a couple of nights, no, three nights I think, uh, I thought I'd stop here for a quick wander around as the sun is out. We're just just to the southeast of Barnard Castle and um, Barnard Castle itself is a lovely little town on the River Tees and uh, this is also on the River Tees. So welcome to Eggleston Abbey. It is an English heritage site. It's a free site. Seems to be quite a bit here really. Gonna have a wander around and uh, see what there is from all sides. You can hear the river. I think the river's over there somewhere. We'll go and have a look in a minute. Different bits of ruins. One bit there, another bit over there in the middle, and then this bit in front of me, and there's a sign, we'll go and find out what it all is. Eggleston was a pre monstratensian house founded around 1195. These monasteries were made up of canons, ordained priests, who served the spiritual needs of nearby communities. When it was visited by Henry VIII's commissioners in 1535, it was the poor, poorest house in England. It was closed on 5th, 5th of January 1540, and the abbot and eight canons were pensioned off. In the 18th century, the East Range was used as cottages and new farm buildings were built nearby. It was abandoned in the late 1800s, and in 1925, the remains were placed into the guardianship of the state. The church rebuilt. So when the abbey was built in the early 20, 1200s, its buildings were modest and plain due to limited resources available. Between around 1250 and 1300, the abbey church was rebuilt in a Gothic style. One end of the church here. So that's east. Pretty huge window. Look at those blue skies. And then looking west, we have the other end. Like it's missing the lid. Someone's tomb. The large chest tomb in the middle of the church probably dates from the 14th century. It was moved to the nearby Rokeby estate as a garden ornament in around 1791 and was returned here in 1929. It is thought to commemorate Sir Ralph Bowes of Stretlam Castle. There are several tomb slabs, some of which have indents, indents for memorial brasses that would have been taken after the abbey's closure. One has an inscription commemorating an illegitimate son of the local gentry family, Thomas Rokeby, bastard. This bit looks like some sort of housey bit. Hopefully there'll be a sign in a minute, tell me all about that. This is a nice room. This is cool and it's at the bottom of the house and it's got an arch ceiling. 
looks like a fireplace. Just to the left there. Kitchens, storeroom, where they kept the beer. Here's a passageway with a two foot six high arch. And the other way, another one with a little arch. It goes around the corner. Wouldn't surprise me, it's something to do with the toilet system. That's one end of this room. And this sign says it's the post-monastic house. The East Range, which is what this is, was rebuilt in the late 16th century and most of its visible features date from then. The house was subdivided in the 19th century. Writing in 1904, the Reverend Hodgson remembered four families living here and that a ground floor room had an oak ceiling painted blue with clouds. In the late 1800s, the building was partly demolished and left in ruins. And this is just the other side, so this is the far east. Incredible stone chimney there. And the last piece of information on it, on this sign, the vaulted room to your right is the best preserved part of the monastic buildings. Its use is unknown, but it may have served as the infirmary. Well, I told them what it was. That's what's left of the post-monastic house. like there's some stairs at the end. I have to go up there. Come up to the first floor. Lo and behold, the Rera Daughter, the Canon's Lavatories. Running water from Thorsgill Beck flushed the waste through a finely made stone drain. You've seen that. So this is where you go and sit. That's where it ends up. Yeah, so this is the first floor of the fireplace leading up to the massive chimney block. You've got a good view of the cloisters and the church, various other buildings and the outlines left on the floor. In the background it was the farm that was built. So this bit of wall looks like it's what left as a huge of a huge chimney you can see it curving in at the top maybe this room is the great hall or something I've come right to the corner now so we can get a good overview of it all so that was the living quarters cloisters in the middle church running east-west more buildings in the foreground here and Bentley sitting over there patiently Quite an interesting photo there, that's the East Range, so the living quarters, photograph of it in the late 19th century. At the centre of the abbey was a cloister, a square courtyard with graceful one-storey arcades surrounding it on all sides. This gave access to the main monastery buildings, the church to the south, the chapter house to the east and the warming room and refectory to the north. The west side may have housed the abbot's lodgings. The cloister was rebuilt around 1250. The slender columns that carried its narrow pointed arches were made of a fine local limestone, Eggleston marble. This dark, polishable marble 
was also used strikingly at Durham Cathedral. You may not be able to pick it out, but that is the stairwell. It's got a circular, or did have a circular stairwell, and then there are two little faces just at the top of that arch to the right. Maybe you'll be able to zoom in. Zoom in. Funny little faces. Let's get down these tracks to that farm. Yes, get in there. Ditch. They're right, then go straight on. After 400 yards, go straight on. Oh, narrow bridge. No one told me there was a narrow bridge. Tight, woof. Can you see that? Look at that sky. Well, having got down the narrow tracks, I've made it to the site. I'm staying at Lodge Farm. Uh, I think that's in the Hamlet, I think it's a hamlet of Scargill, just south of Barnard Castle, just south of the main road going east west. And uh, I've set up. That's a view across the fields looking northish. There's me, set up. Actually, it's reasonably level that. Chair, that's it, set up, done. That's the rest of the campsite. 
and that's Lodge Farm. There are two couples living in there. That's the rest of the field. I think that caravan at the top may be something to do with that house. That's another farm. Can't remember what that was called. And uh, but yeah, they've got a little drive alongside here. And in the background, I can't see anything on my screen, but there are hills. Hills and dales. So plenty of exploring to do up there. This is affiliated to the Caravan Club. So it's a certified listing, CL I think it is. And uh, no facilities. Well, when I say no facilities, there is fresh water, there is uh, dumping your L sand, there is dumping your gray, gray waste. Um, and it's nine pounds a night. So I'm here for three nights at present. And we'll see how it goes. Sun is out, it's nice up north. I think the south is having some rain, but it's all right here. <laughs>